Another day, another Formula One car launch. This time it's the hotly anticipated Renault. This is the team that we're all hoping as neutrals is going to challenge the big three teams in Formula One. It's an important launch and that's why it's on the cover of this week's Autosport magazine. So make sure you pick that up on Thursday. JBL's back with me to talk about this car as we do with every single car. Before we get to Jake, I just want to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are going to do technical analysis of every new car when it's released. That's why you haven't seen the Williams yet. And from testing and throughout the Formula One season, we'll be bringing you much more video content. So you won't miss a thing if you subscribe to the channel. JBL, the Renault's out. And this is an interesting one because we've heard from the team that really the, the real car isn't ready yet. We're just a few days away from testing, but it means that what we're looking at isn't necessarily the finished article. And this can actually be a trend during launch season, can't it? We ask technical experts like yourself to tell us what you can see on the new images and then you kind of have to caveat it almost by saying, look, this is potentially going to be different when we get to testing. And Renault is the best example of that yet, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, even with the Toro Rosso we saw yesterday, there were one or two bits and pieces that should be on the final car, but weren't. And again, this is the same case here. We, we go into this and we always know that we're, they're going to turn up in pre-season testing looking a little bit different. Everybody's keeping their cards very close to their chest, especially because nobody wants to be the, one, the first one to blink first. Mm. Um, you don't want to show your hand and then everybody's suddenly got a couple of weeks to think, oh, we didn't think of that, and then develop a part. So, yeah, obviously we're looking at a car that I think is, out of the ones that have launched so far, is the most clear one that, you know, is pretty much last year's car with a few 2019 bits and pieces on it. Yeah, so we'll go through the bits that we can see from these images. And if we get to testing and the Renault comes out and it's completely different, we'll have this conversation again from Barcelona. But let's get into the bits that we can talk about and inevitably we're starting at the front wing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's quite interesting, this one. Um, we saw the Toro Rosso yesterday, it was like quite a very simplistic wing, but I think the thing that stands out here is the fact that it almost folds inwards at this point. It's like, uh, it's like an accordion almost. It's sort of like compressed here and it flares outwards here. So what that kind of suggests is that Renault are trying to, you know, claw back that outwash that everybody's lost over the, over the winter. And use the actual shape of the wing itself to direct out and around the front tires. There's also this very curved end plate here, um, the vortex tunnel here. Um, so Renault have all of the bits and pieces able to do that. And then you see the attachment points here, the front wing flap adjuster here, that's all angled very aggressively outward. And that's just trying to move as much air around the front tire as possible so that all of the effects of uh, tire wake that we've spoken about various times before are, are minimised, that this vortex being driven outward can trim that off and ensure that the rest of the car has a stable base to work with. So it's probably one of the most interesting front wings we've seen so far out of the 2019 regulations. Um, we can also see some very wide slot gaps here and it just looks like they're just trying to point and squirt as much airflow in this direction around the suspension components at the brake ducts. And it also suggests um, that they're quite happy with how their front end downforce is, so they can afford to take a few liberties here and there. Yeah, because the comparison to the wings we've already seen from Toro Rosso and Haas, what we saw there was almost the teams trying to make the wings as big as possible to reclaim as much downforce as they could for everything that they've lost with the new regs. But Renault appeared to have a, a much more sculpted wing that's perhaps doing some of the things that front wings have been doing recently before the rule changes and it's that they're looking further down the car than necessarily thinking about what they can claw back just in this area. Yeah definitely it seems to be very much rooted in the front wings that we've seen over the last few years and they think okay how can we get this back how can we get the flow structures that we like to work with the rest of the car and so they've tried to open this section out as much here as possible here so where the end plate comes downwards a vortex can usually propagate around here and then with that end plate it just drives it outwards again and yeah so yeah they're trying to recoup as much performance as they possibly can really. The natural next place to move on to then is the barge boards and we've got a bit of a view here it's always hard with the, the, the black cars to see what's going on but what are Renault doing here how have they approached the new dimensions that the teams have to work within for the barge boards? So what we know is that the barge boards have to be lower and but they're able to be moved further forward. So what Renault are using is they're using 
this suspension component here, the top of the wishbone, and angling the airflow downward so it then folds into this barge board section here, uh, this sort of gap here that they can draw airflow through. Um, there's a number of serrations as well along the bottom edge as well. So what that's doing is it's trying to take as much flow from the front wing as possible that comes from the front end of the car, managing it, being able to create vortices and sort of packing them up almost and then sending them further down the car. So that's the general idea with that. Um, the sort of aero cat design, as they call it here, um, that's now been reshaped a little bit just to, you know, accept tyre wake in a different fashion because obviously you know, the flow structure is going to change mm. a lot. Um, they've moved it further down the side pod. And then again, with the side pod inlet, it's... This is becoming a bit of a trend. Everybody's using the sort of Ferrari style of the high inlet so that when the airflow goes through the suspension components, it's not creating a blockage as much. So that they're able to essentially just enjoy more airflow through there, more predictable airflow. Um, and so when you're trying to create as much cooling to the radiator as possible, you get the mass flow rate of airflow that you need. So it seems to be a solution that everybody's working towards now. Yeah, it's really interesting. You always look for those things on the cars where it's clear that everybody has decided that's a good idea that that team did last year and we're all going to copy it. And that side pod raised inlet definitely seems to be one this year. Of course, it gives a better undercut as well underneath the side pod for all the various aerodynamic advantages you get in this part of the car. Now, we'll move back to the head on image because actually what's going on up here is interesting. Now, when we've been doing these technical analysis video so far we've been focusing on the same areas really it is front wings barge boards and then whatever's happening perhaps after that certainly a bit around the side pods that's because that's really where either the car designs are changing or the rule changes have been but Renault have given us something else to talk about which is always welcome and that's the engine air intake and the in the air box so let's let's move up the car and what have you noticed there so what we can see is a very pronounced oval shape here now, it's something that they used last year, but maybe we didn't notice it so much, but you can clearly see the two different um, strakes in inside that sort of direct airflow to other parts. So you've got one for the internal combustion engine, one for MGUK, one for perhaps uh, MGUH, and all of those associated components as well. Um, we got a word yesterday from Gary Anderson about this because when he was working with Jordan, um, they used overwear and takes in 97 and 98, I think it was. And so he was the best person to ask. So he says, quite simply, it just ensures that they're able to raise the intake as high as possible, ensure that there's no disturbance from the driver's heads. Um, both Nico Hülkenberg and Daniel Ricciardo are not the shortest of drivers. Mm. So that's definitely a bonus that they will have. And obviously it's a solution that Renault have found works for them. So it does look quite bulky front on, but presumably they've been able to recoup some attachment around the sides so that it doesn't affect the rear wing too much because otherwise it would look like a little bit of an ungainly solution, but again, it seems to work. And we'll finish at the rear of the car. We haven't talked that much about rear wings yet. We did a bit with the Haas because there was lots of serrations down the rear wing following a trend that McLaren really started. But what have you noticed on the Renault rear wing that's caught your eye? Uh, well, first of all, it looks incredibly simple compared to what we've had before. Um, there's no serrations or anything like that. There's a leading edge slot here, but that seems to be about the long and short of it. But what I wanted to discuss more is another trend, which is using these swan neck wing mounts. That, In here? Yeah, so it essentially attaches to, rather than the suction side of the bottom of the wing, it attaches to what's known as the pressure side. So that's the point at which the high pressure comes in contact with the wing and essentially below it the suction pressure that's a low pressure surface and essentially that just creates downforce. By having the wing mount underneath you lose some of your suction surface and so quite simply you're not generating as much downforce you're perhaps getting a little bit of flow separation as well so by positioning it to the top uh, they were able to just essentially maximize the downforce that the rear wing produces and they've also been able to situate a little monkey seat in between them. Um, we thought that monkey seats were gone, but it's back. So Renault have been able to find a way to incorporate you know, a previous solution back into the mix. Yeah, F1 aerodynamicists never forget. And if they can find a loophole <laughs> to get something back in, they'll always find that way. We've had Giorgio Piola, our famed technical illustrator, take a look at the car as well. And here are some of his thoughts on Renault's design. The first picture, the front picture of the new Renault, Okay, the wing is very normal and immediately you can see very big uh, brake duct, uh, even bigger 
than the one that, for example, Astia Ferrari was using. That was the biggest one. And immediately you see very the two the top wishbone and the lower wishbone they are very close with the lower one very high mounted, and the steering column is at the level of the top wishbone. And uh, again, another st- thing interesting you see that the um, the two wing uh, profile uh, on top of the cypress, the lower one includes uh, the deformable structure. On the side view picture, we can notice immediately a big, big rake uh, ratio. Uh, when there was the prediction from the 2019 cars, uh, most people said that this year there will be less uh, rake. This car seems to be extremely high rake. The beginning of the floor is very high with the rear strike uh, on the bottom and the air intake of the side pods is very high and you see very well the shape of the side pods uh, accelerating the air and when there is the Renault uh, with the lowest point then expanding again to the back you can see uh, the nose is very narrow uh, the wing uh, pillar has two slot and uh, there is the hair intake in the low section of uh, the nose for the S duct so we have to see the for the new cars uh, in Barcelona just to see all the technical stuff this is really just a first impression for me I don't believe it will be just like this the car everybody are hiding uh, all the best uh, solution so we have to see